Your phone can directly connect to SpaceX Starlink satellites and make a call from anywhere on the planet. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Dark Temptation. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. Hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is once again a technology day. We're going to be talking about your phone and how you can use this now to connect to a satellite on orbit at 540 kilometers off the planet. Amazing, right? Obviously, you have to be outside. You can't do it from indoors, but from outside, you're going to be able to do this very shortly. They are testing this service, as they call it, direct to sell service. This is a combined effort between, in the United States, T-Mobile and SpaceX Starlink. But there are other providers that are doing this. So I want to go through some of this with you today because I think it's very interesting. And this is going to help out a lot of people. People that have had no service in the past will be able to have a connection, even if they're at the top of a mountain somewhere. Even if it's just for emergency uses, they're going to be able to do it. Unlike in the past where you would have to have an Iridium or some type of cell phone that costs you thousands of dollars, now you can use the phone in your pocket. This is just simply cool. Now, Apple has been doing this for a while, but remember that is only texting, emergency texting they are providing through a satellite. But what Elon Musk is doing here is he's starting out with texting, but then moving into data. That is a really big thing because eventually you're just going to be able to make a phone call, maybe even a video call and be able to do it once again with a satellite that's on orbit. That's absolutely amazing. So I was reading an article that I want to go through with you and then I want to give you my commentary as always do. And then, of course, I want to hear from you. What do you think? Is this something that's going to be big for you? Do you travel a lot? Are you out and about where you don't have coverage and now you really will? What do you think about the ramifications of this service? Basically having a cell tower in orbit, many cell towers. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's very cool and I think it's going to help a lot of people worldwide. People that have some type of an emergency, people that don't have any service at all. I think it's going to be very, very helpful. And like I said, it's starting out here in the US with only T-Mobile as they partnered T-Mobile and SpaceX Starlink, but I think there'll probably be more providers that will come on board. I know there are foreign providers that I'll get into in just a second that are already on board and a new one. Also, anyways, let's get into this article. But before I do, I want to say if you enjoy this, even in the least, throw the video a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Also, if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. If you are subscribed, thank you. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button. You can click there, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So this article starts out by saying SpaceX has started the new year with a bang, launching 21 SpaceX Starlink satellites on its Falcon 9 rocket on Tuesday night. That's yesterday. The launch, which took place in Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, marked the debut of the first direct to sell or DTC feature on six satellites. Now, in the past, I said that it wasn't six. There was a lot of them that already have this service. Maybe I'm wrong. They're saying that there's six that currently have the service. Remember, when they say the service, this is an antenna. It is a, let's call it a cell tower <laughs> on the satellite because that's what you're going to be basically connecting through, that cell tower. When you go outside eventually, and this is working, your phone's not gonna know if you're connected to a cell tower down the road or a cell tower at 550 kilometers above head. So it's really pretty cool if you think about it. The phone will not know the difference. The article continues, the DTS feature will allow mobile phones to connect directly to Starlink satellites without ground infrastructure. Very important. This will enable users to access voice, text, and data service anywhere, 
even in a remote area or a disaster zone. Earlier, SpaceX was granted permission by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, to conduct a pilot project for its Starlink mobile service. The project will test the use of satellites to provide internet access to smartphones across the U.S. using T-Mobile's Spectrum to send data to unmodified phones on the ground via Starlink satellites. Like I said, unmodified phone. You'll be able to use your phone. You don't need a special phone, which I think is amazing. You can use your phone to be able to access satellites overhead. Pretty cool. The article continues, the FCC granted SpaceX, quote, an experimental special temporary authorization for 180 days or until June 14th, 2024, with the approval coming a week after the company received a partial nod to deploy the Starlink mobile service. However, the initial approval restricted SpaceX from doing any other testing besides testing the functionality of the satellite antennas. That changed. SpaceX had originally planned to launch this mission in mid-December, but faced some technical issues that delayed the launch. The technical issues was some really crappy weather among a couple other things. It was pretty bad at the end of the year. The company's founder and CEO, Elon Musk, said on X that the DTC, or the direct to sell feature, was a quote, massive game changer that would eliminate the problem of cellular dead zones. He also clarified that the DTC feature was not meant to compete with existing terrestrial networks as it only supports seven megabits per beam, and the beams were very large. Now, what that means is basically this, seven megabits, that's the maximum speed as of right now. It's probably more, but that's what they state. And the beam, instead of being a really tight cone that's hitting the planet, like SpaceX Starlink satellites, it is very broad. So it's hitting a large area. When you hit a large area, that means that there's going to be a lot more people using that same cone. So we can see that congestion will be a problem as of right now, but there'll be a lot more satellites that have this feature built in, and then that problem won't be a problem in the future. Musk and T-Mobile's CEO announced the partnership between the two companies in August 2022 and said that the up-and-coming service in the U.S. would use the existing T-Mobile mid-band PCS spectrum, which was already compatible with most phones in the market. Like I said, most phones, if you have a phone, most likely you will be able to connect to SpaceX Starlink satellites with your phone, unmodified. That is just super cool. T-Mobile CEO said, quote, if you have a clear view of the sky, our vision is you are connected. He added that phones would not know they were connected to space as they would use the same industry standard technology and protocols as they would for terrestrial networks. Like I said, your phone will not know the difference if you're connected to a tower local to you or if you're connected to a satellite at 550 kilometers above Earth. It will not know the difference difference, which is super cool. Once again, the technology remains the same. Could you imagine the power of those antennas? Yeesh. I wouldn't want to be up there. He'd probably be fried like in a microwave. <laughs> Anyways, SpaceX planned to launch about 840 more DTC compatible satellites over the next six months to achieve a critical mass of satellites for commercial service by late 2024. The company has requested that the Federal Communications Commission or the FCC to grant its launch license for about 7,500 satellites in its direct to sell modification application. So, First, we're going to see 800, 840. Then we're going to see up to 7,500. Like I said, at first, that really wide cone is going to be an issue, right? But once you hit 7,000, it just doesn't matter anymore. The entire planet will be covered. So I went over to the website to see what it has to say anything different or any kind of modifications. I did find out a couple of things. Now, if you want to do the same, you can go to direct.com. Starlink.com. Once again, direct 
www.starlink.com and go check it out for yourself. It says direct to sell satellites will initially be launched on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets and then on the Starship. On orbit, the satellites will immediately connect over laser backhaul to the Starlink constellation to provide global connectivity. What does that mean? That means that once that satellite gets into orbit, it is going to immediately through lasers connect, make a connection with all of the other 5,000 plus satellites that are in orbit and basically become yet another node or another AP or access point in this massive worldwide mesh network of internet connectivity that Elon Musk is putting up there with SpaceX Starlink. Now it did say that the test satellites are going to be brighter than the current satellites, but that the future version versions will be as dim as the current. What does that mean? That means that all of the current satellites that are up there now have this new non-reflective coating, almost like this phone, right? This non-reflective coating, which is cool. That makes it so that you don't see it. If you're an astronomer on the ground, you don't want to see all of these bright lights in the sky because it messes up your pictures, right? Or your studies of the sky. That could be a problem, a severe problem. So they have this matte finish now on them, but they also adjust the angle at which those satellites are overhead. So as they're going around the planet, that angle is changing a little bit so that you don't get that reflective glare. Like this phone, if I point it like this, you can see that it's very reflective, right? You can see it right on the screen. Now, if I just angle it just a little bit like that, all of a sudden it almost disappears. And that's exactly what they're doing with these satellites. If it normally would come up overhead like this and you can see that bright dot in the sky, they will angle it just a little bit as they're coming up overhead and you don't see it. Very cool. So there's two different things that they're doing. Once again, the new satellites all have that, let's call it a matte black finish, but they also adjust their, let's say, angle, all right, according to where they are over on the planet. Now back to the partnership here between T-Mobile and SpaceX Starlink. Well, those are not the only ones. What I found here on the website is that it says that the cellular providers using direct to sell have access to reciprocal global access in all partner nations. Now, T-Mobile is the US, all right? That is the partner in the US currently. But they also have Optus in Australia, Rogers Network in Canada, 1NZ in New Zealand, KDDI in Japan, SALT in Switzerland, and now there's one that was not there before, and it is Intel, and that's in Chile. So that is a new one on the list. So I'm going to guess they're going to expand. SpaceX Starlink is going to get more backhauling providers, let's say, that will have this connectivity throughout the planet, which is really great. Just think about it. The spectrum is already there. They're using the old PCS spectrum that they're not really using it. Now they're using it for something good. There is absolutely no reason to have spectrum sitting there dormant. You might as well use it. This is a perfect application for it. Remember, at first, we're going to have slower speeds, just like what Elon Musk said. Seven megabits is what they're currently testing. And it is through this wide beam or hitting a large swath of land. It's very similar to TV providers, for example, like Dish Network or DirecTV or even satellite internet providers like Viasat as well as HughesNet. Those satellites are sitting on orbit very far from the planet. Most of them are sitting right around geo at 35,000 kilometers, 35, 36,500 kilometers. That is 36,000 kilometers higher than SpaceX Starlink satellites that are sitting at 500, 540 kilometers. So they're hitting a massive area. That cone from that distance is massive. That's why you can have one satellite providing TV, for example, to the entire Southeast or a good portion of the whole United States. It's amazing, right? It's because they're so far away. But being so far away, you have extremely slow service. There's a lot of latency going on. Having low Earth orbit or LEO satellites that once again are so close, well, you're going to end up with lower latency, faster speeds, just better, better, better. 
So this is really, really interesting. I wanna know your thoughts. I'm excited about it. Like I said, Apple has been doing it for a while. There's been other companies that have been doing it for years. Well, now Starlink is doing it, SpaceX. And I think that this is going to be bigger than what all the other providers are doing. Why do I say that? Well, the other providers are using very few satellites. Whereas when SpaceX turns this thing on, let's say live, and there's 800 satellites, and then eventually 7,500 satellites, that is a mega difference, massive. Also, the amount of satellites that are in this network, in this mesh network, is just second to none. They cannot be compared to any other satellite constellation out there. So when a single satellite can now connect to 5,500 satellites at the speed of light using backhauling, using lasers, I mean, there's nothing that you could, there's no possible way to compete with that. All right. So I think that these other providers will remain on an SOS type of base where it's texting only, whereas I see SpaceX Starlink going the other way with it and will eventually provide high speed Internet access right through the satellite as long as you are outside. How fast? We don't know, but I'm going to guesstimate they will most likely be able to get to 25, maybe even 50 megabits down. And that five, six, maybe seven megabits up, I wouldn't doubt it because they are going to have so many of these. And once again, you can use your phone to do it. You don't need to buy a thousand dollar phone like you had to do way back in the past, getting some type of Iridium connection with a sat phone and they were huge and you, you know, you don't need that anymore. You could literally use your phone from the top of a mountain and be able to now text out communications if you do have a problem. Once again, the whole idea of emergency service has just changed. It is a game changer. And once it has video as well as data, now all of a sudden it changes even more because you will have GPS connectivity anywhere on the planet and you will just need your phone even if you have no cell service. How many times have I gone through mid-state of Florida and have absolutely no cellular connection at all and that no longer have any GPS signal? So if I didn't know where I was going, you, the phone doesn't know anymore because it doesn't have any connection. People don't think about this, and that's why truck drivers, for example, they always have an actual proper GPS in their truck and they do not rely on their phone because those proper GPS devices connect directly to those satellites and not through a cellular network. That is very helpful. Anyways, guys, I wanna know your thoughts. Is this something that you're excited about? Is this something that will help you? Are you in a location that you do not have great service and now with this, at least you will have some service? What do you think about them moving into a data-centric in comparison to text-only type of system? And what do you think about the idea of having 840 to begin with and then finally 7,500 cell towers on orbit? Are we going to get radiated? <laughs> I know that's going to be some of you guys to be like, yeah, we're going to get way too much radiation down here. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please throw the video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Also, if you need a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jchristina. If you use that, you'll get an additional 15% off or use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN. And finally, Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget the merch and my teas and everything else. That would be awesome. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.